Hi, my name is Robert Reese. I'm here at the Denison Pequot Seapost Nature Center. And the lesson for today is about living and non living. Living and non living. How can you tell if something's alive? Hmm, that's a really good question. What does it mean to be alive? Hmm, you probably know there's. There's things that are alive. You know, if I were to ask you, like, is a chipmunk alive? You would say, of course a chipmunk's alive. But how do you know that it's alive? What about this rock? Whoa, this is a cool rock. It's like rosy quartz. There's probably a lot of power in the rock. But is it alive? Hmm. No, no, it's not alive. It's not living. It's a non-living object. Was it ever alive? That's a good question. No, it was never alive. At no point in history was this rock ever a living thing. So it's a non-living object. What about this? This is kind of like a rock. It's a skull. But this was definitely at one point alive. So it's from a living thing. So it's living, right? It's from a living thing. It's not alive anymore, but it used to be. What about this tin can? Tin, you know, could put food in it maybe, right? Is that alive? Is this a living thing? No, of course not. That was never alive, was it? Here's a little, here's one that might trick you. What does Mr. Rob think about that one? Well, this is plastic, right? But it's a plastic butterfly. Are butterflies alive? I mean, they don't talk, right? But yeah, they're alive. Butterflies are living things, okay? So what makes an object or an animal or plant alive how do we know well all living things all living things have to breathe all of them you breathe all the time right all living things have to breathe animals like us we're animals by the way animals breathe oxygen that's the that's the gas we need right and we use our lungs. Some animals live in the ocean or lakes and they use gills, but they still use the oxygen, right? Uh, plants, they breathe, but it's different, isn't it? it they don't they have lungs or gills or anything like that, and they don't use the oxygen. Instead, they use the carbon dioxide, right? That's what they need. Carbon dioxide so they can take the carbon and make sugar out of it, right? So we have... <clears throat> living things, they all breathe, but sometimes it looks different or they're breathing a different thing, right? They're, they're after a different substance, right? But still, they're breathing. All living things breathe. What about, mm, it's almost lunchtime. I'm kind of hungry. Mm, I don't know. I think I should eat something. All living things take in nutrients of some sort, right? This little butterfly totally took in nectar from flowers, okay? This rock has never taken in a nutrient in its entire life because it's non-living. That's a serious diet, right? Non-living things, right? So living things have to take in nutrients. Uh, let's see, all living things are able to sense in some way and adapt to their environment. They sense it. Like I see everything around me. An owl can even see in the dark. I can hear things, I can smell what's cooking for dinner. I can, I can, um, I can feel, I can touch, see if something's rough, right? Or sharp, okay? All animals have senses like that. 
Now, even plants, even plants can sense what's around them. It's not that they can like see or have a, an extra sense or something like that, but they can adjust to when it's dry. They can adjust to when it's uh, really, really sunny, right? Or, or really, really wet or too cold or there isn't enough sun, right? They can make adjustments. They can sense. They can, they can uh, change what they're doing just a little bit. For example, when it gets too cold and there isn't enough sun for uh, trees to make food, what do they do? They lose their leaves to conserve water. That's really important, right? And if they couldn't sense the difference, they wouldn't be able to know when to do that. So, um, so there's an example for you. I have some living things to show you here. First, my friend and semi-aquatic companion here, a painted turtle. Here we go. This is a cute little painted turtle. He is totally alive. You see him there? This is a little boy painted turtle. You know, they're called painted turtles because of that bright color right there. You see that? It's like reddish orange there, and it's kind of orange on the neck, and then bright white, i uh, sorry, uh, yellow on the head there. Yeah. That's one cool turtle. Now, turtles do all of those things we just talked about. Plus one more we didn't talk about really is turtles lay eggs. All living things have to reproduce in some way. Here we go, right? And turtles are no exception, they lay eggs. So little turtles, like painted turtles, will lay a clutch of rubbery, white rubbery eggs in soil that's just right. Not too wet, not too hot, not too cold. Not too dry, just right. It's a little turtle. He lives in a pond. You can see he's got webbed feet. He likes to swim around and look for invertebrates to eat. He breathes through his nose. but he can hold his breath for a long time. They can hold their breath for like 20 minutes. I have one more guest for you. He's right here. So don't go away. He's really cool. I really like these guys. They can be perfectly still for a long time and just wait because they are snakes these reptiles are so cool check him out right there there he is i know he's he's really really bright huh yeah so he's an albino corn snake his name is sock you see what he's doing there with his tongue He's actually using his tongue to smell. Remember I said that living things can sense the world around them? That's what he's doing. He's got eyes. He's got his tongue to smell and taste. Okay. He can feel if something's touching him. Right? But you know what's really cool? That he can't hear a thing. He has no idea I'm talking about him. <laughs> so there we go. There's there's sock. Now snakes can't hear anything. They don't have ears, right? Um, they also lay eggs. They're also reptiles, just like the the turtle does. Although some snakes give live birth. I don't know if you knew that. So that's how they reproduce. And they can, uh, they eat small rodents and other things. Some snakes will eat fish and eggs and worms and insects and 
all sorts of other prey. Isn't that cool? There's a little corn snake. His name is Sock. Sock, say hi. There we go. Now before I go, we're going to play one little game. It's right here. I'm going to hold up a card, and then you're going to tell me if it's living or non-living. If it's living, it's going to go right in there. If it's not living, it's going to go right in there. Here we go. Basketballs. That's right. It's not living. Let's see. Markers. That's right. Not living. Hmm. What do you got here? Let's see. A dog. Living. That's right. A horse. Living. You're absolutely right. You're good at this. Here we go. A cat. A little kitty cat. Kind of looks like my cat. That is also living. What about a, what about uh, candy? Candy, little candies, not living. Here we go. What about um, an airplane, not living? Parrot, yeah, you're right, it's living. A dolphin, living, that's right. A butterfly. We already talked about that one, huh? Living. Here we go. An elephant. They can certainly hear what's going on, huh? Living. That's right. And last but not least, what about a person? That's right. They are alive as well. We are all living here. We are living things. Some things are not, like this rock. <laughs> Well, thanks again, uh, and uh, thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this little program, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.